many Third Reich expeditions were initiated through the orders and foundations. Edmund Kiss went for the second time to South America with an elite group of scientists and the latest technology in order to find and enter into the inner earth and Agatha. Allegedly, they found a spaceship from Atlantis in one of the bigger caves. The secret society, Akakor, was founded, whose role it was to further explore the technology, even in the event of a war. In the 80s, was ARD television correspondent Karl Brugger killed because he had published a book which alleged an active role of this same society up to the present day? I had the privilege of knowing Karl Brugger, the author of De Chronic von Akakor, many years ago in Brazil, where we worked together with the white Indian peoples of the upper Amazon, who spoke a dialogue very much like an ancient Germanic language and who had contact with the star people. Tragically, Karl Brugger was killed by someone in the Brazilian establishment who felt he had too much information on the Indian civilizations and perhaps knew too much about the genocide against the Indian peoples taking place. I dedicated my book, The Sphinx on Mars, to Karl Brugger, and in this book I show for the first time the historic pictures that NASA has of the pyramid structures on Mars as well as pictures of the pyramids in Brazil in South American places, suggesting that there is a historic connection between the planetary grid of energy places marked by pyramids and temples and those of other planetary bodies. Karl Brugger was one of the great historians, journalists, and humanists of the 20th century. It is very important for each of us to try to get in contact with his teaching, his legacy, because it forms the connecting link between the Indian peoples, the earlier Atlantean type peoples, or what is called in Central America the Atlans, the great giants who are blonde, and the European peoples to show a connecting bridge between civilizations and centuries. The chronic also refers to the coming of the extraterrestrial peoples, according to the Indians, at the beginning of the 21st century. Due to the misuse of science, the destruction of the planetary environment, the imbalance of knowledge, what we call Western civilization, the Untergang des Auslands, will come to a quick change with the appearance of the star people. And for this reason, we must keep our eyes and ears open to the signs from space of a new communication system connected also with the teachings of the Indian peoples. The South American Indians of the Andes recognize UFOs as brothers from the sky who have always been there, who are there today. They are not any more unique than an airplane, an airliner flying overhead with passengers aboard. To them, the brothers from the sky have always been there. They do, they do make contact with the Indians and they do treat people in remote areas where they cannot get to doctors. They, they heal them. They treat them medically. Uh, they interact with the Indians and with primitive people, both in the high plains and the mountaintops and, and in the deep jungles. So when, when we began asking about these brothers from the sky, we discovered stories about these such contacts everywhere. And in the course of one of these stories, we were interested, we were introduced to an Indian from the upper Amazon, I think his name was Akunta, but I'm not sure at the present time, who offered to take us back into a civilization that he came from that was uh, primarily based on a European culture that was transported there or transposed there sometime about the end of World War II, and they had taken uh, scientists and uh, scientific research underground in an area in the upper Amazon where they had succeeded in developing disc-shaped aerial vehicles that they could use to go all over the world with. The society was, this Indian called the society Akakor. Uh, he said that he had guided a German uh, researcher by the name of Brueger, and I think his name was Martin Brueger, B-R-U-G-G-E-R, -G -G -E who was actually taken to the city and 
was afforded an opportunity to meet with some of the, the, the Europeans there. That Indian tribe in that area has many blue-eyed, blonde-haired Indians, and they appear to be descendants of a Germanic uh, a group of people that were taken there sometime in the middle 1940s. And now they have produced children and they are young adults and a society is flourishing there that is, is uh, advanced over the contemporary societies around them by a substantial degree. Uh, we can take you back there. There is a man who lives in that area. His name is A.J. Gaviard, who will be willing to introduce us to I either the Indian that guided Martin Brueger or other Indians from the same tribe who may be willing to take us back far enough to meet some of the members of that society. It's, it's operated as a closed society. They do not come out in down the river and, and enter Western civilizations. When they come out, they come out in, in their spacecraft and pick up what they need and take it back into the society and they live in a closed environment, pretty much protected by the wilderness of the jungle itself. So it's possible to go back and investigate further investigate the evidence of the existence of Akakor uh, at, at any time. Uh, I, we can produce people who can do this. We can look at, at Mr. Brueger's uh, evidence that he published, which was the result of his own research. But I personally am convinced that this society exists, that they have circular disc-shaped craft, that they fly and operate them there, and perhaps some of the disc-shaped craft that we are discovering in the reports of the Indian aboriginals of the highlands of the upper plateau there may be some of the vehicles from Akakor. We also know that many of the vehicles that they describe are not from Akakor, that they come from elsewhere. Some of them are extraplanetary. They come from beyond this planet and they have unique technologies and they have human beings aboard who are quite different and, and quite advanced over the contemporary humanity of Earth today. These humans are interacting with the natives down there also, and there is substantial evidence that these extraterrestrial races are directly connected with the earlier civilizations of Tiwanaku, of the Olmecs, of uh, a number of the other earlier civilizations in South America at a time before the last cataclysmic disturbances that changed all the society and reduced it to savagery once more. A further expedition was sent to the South Pole, Expedition Schwabenland, in order to find the land with no ice and to explore the access to the inner earth. Another expedition was sent to the Icelandic geysers, since there were insider stories about the access to the inner earth. And another expedition was organized by Sven Hedin to the Taklamakam Desert in Tibet, in order to find traces of the old culture of Ud. in the Buddhistic esoteric tradition as Shambhala is an actual area in the Taklamakan area of central China next to the Gobi Desert. In 1988, with permission of the Chinese Academy of Science, I conducted research experiments in this area and confirmed with other engineers the existence of a vast underground complex of grottoes, ancient structures and buildings. And in these structures we find statues of the avatars or beings later celebrated in Buddhism as the bodhisattvas, the beings that came from space in the Vimana and the Tathagata. These are ancient Sanskrit terms for the vehicles of higher intelligence. In my opinion, Shambhala does exist as an underground 
structured civilization that is now being uncovered in Central Asia. And in this area of the Gobi, I believe we will find the origins of the Garden of Paradise, or the Gan Eden, the Garden of Eden, as it is referred to in our book of Genesis.